Well, I was working at Boeing, and Dan Carney uh, came out there, and uh, we I, I signed up for this class uh, to take. It was a, about a four-week class on uh, in uh, industrial engineering, and I said I would have been an inspector at Boeing before that, and I was just back from the Army, and I went back out there and and uh, started, you know, going into the inspection department and had a bulletin board article that uh, they were looking for people to, to uh, become in, in industrial engineers and at least part of it anyway is what we did. And, and so I went to the first class and saw this guy sitting ahead of me up there and I said, look familiar and I knew him from a year before me in high school. I didn't know him well, I just knew who he was. But I went and started talking to him, and, and so the next day we sat together, and and I said, where, where do you live? And he told me, and I said, well, I just live north of you, about about uh, six blocks. And I said, why don't we just drive one car? I'll drive and I'll pick you up. And he said, well, that way I could, my, my wife could would, could use our car. And, and, and I said, okay, because my, my, my wife had an old car when we got married. So she had that one. So anyway, so I picked up Dan Carney in the morning. We go to, 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 to Boeing and, and go into this classes for about four weeks. And we ate lunch together and everything. And then when we got assigned to the, the departments, we, were, uh, we assigned con connecting departments. And and so we, we rode together for over a year, year and a half maybe. And we visited and then, and then finally started going over to uh, Carney's house on Friday nights and playing bridge. And and uh, I think that, yeah, we were going over every Friday night playing bridge because nobody had any money to spend or anything. And and they, they, they had three little kids. The third, third number three was just born, uh, this was probably, oh, I'm talking about period here was in about in, January or February of 1958, 58, and and so one day we're we're playing. I think Dan had already left Boeing by that time, and he was working at the family grocery store because they were having problems. Dan's dad had died when Dan was about 14, and so Dan's mother married the the, the cousin of Dan's father. So he still had a Carney as a stepfather, and anyway, uh, they uh, uh, he he said it wasn't working out very good. With his stepfather running the grocery store, so he thought he he better do that. So he quit Boeing. Anyway, we we still went over there on Friday nights and played uh, played uh, played uh, bridge with Dan and Beverly Carney, and one. One Friday night, we're, we're playing cards, and I'd bring uh, a six-pack of beer and Beverly pop, popcorn, and that was that was our evenings out. You know, nobody had any money; we're just getting along. And, and finally, somebody dealt the cards out, and Dan's looking at the cards, and he puts them down. And he's looking up in the air, and I said, "Bid, bid, it's your bid." He said, "I'm thinking, I'm thinking." I said, "What are you thinking about?" And he said, well, "Dick, have you ever eaten pizza?" I said, now what the hell has that got anything to do with the the, the, the the bridge game? And he said, it doesn't. But he said, you know, the, the landlady at our grocery store, she came in and there's a little 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 store by, by itself right in the edge of the parking lot where our grocery store is. And there's a place called the, the B and B, beer and burgers. And these guys had a place that sold beer and hamburgers, two guys. And they gave up the lease because they had another location they thought was better, so they gave the lease up. And the landlady stopped in to collect our rent from the grocery store, and, and she said that that building is available. Why don't you guys go over and uh, run that deal? She said they they said they were making uh, oh two or three hundred dollars a week on that place, and that was pretty good in those days. And uh, they said, well, with well, think about it. How much the rent? And it's only like fifty bucks a month. And and, uh, and Dan says, "Well, 
we'll think about it. And she said, anyway, she, so the next week she came back, she got this uh, Time, mag no, it wasn't Time, it was uh, what magazine, I forget, some national magazine it had an article in it about pizza back in the east part of the United States, how, what, how big an item that was, and people were going crazy over eating. All these Italian restaurants were selling pizza all over it back in, in the East Coast. And so she said, you know, you, you, you could, uh, pizza, nobody saw pizza back here. You ought to try that. And Dan says, right, you know, that's why he asked about if I were eating pizza. And I said, yeah, I was in the Army. And he said, well, I did too when I was in the Air Force after college. And, and, uh, and I said, you know, see, Michael, when I was in the Army at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, you hardly get in that pizza place back there. And, and uh, he said, well, we got a chance to get in the pizza business maybe because we need, we don't know anything about it. But but uh, anyway, so he said, I'm going to, I want to do some thinking about it. Anyway, the next week he said, guess what? He said, went to church Sunday, we were in church and my sister Sally and her husband Jerry were, were there right in front of us on the way out. She said, what's going on? I told him about the, the landlord talking about maybe getting in the pizza business. And he said, my sister Sally says, well, you know, there's a guy that he from the Air, lives in the Air Force. He and his wife moved in right next to us. And, and, and he's out here at the air base. And he, he makes pizza at home. He we're from Indiana. And he, he was working at a pizza restaurant back there a couple of years before he went in the, in the Air Force. He knows how to make pizza really good. So Dan said, well, I'd like to meet him. So he met him and, and later on. And, and uh, they all got together and had pizza. And he said, boy, really, really good pizza. And he knew how to make it. And so they said, well, we're thinking about going into business. And would you like to be a partner? And uh, this John Bender, the Air Force guy, said, yeah. He said, I can, can you work 40 hours a week? And he said, yeah. Work at night and it's weekends. And, and they said, OK. So next thing I know, we go back there. And the next week, you know, and Dan says, well, we need to now. We we're going to go in that pizza business, and we need to come up with a name. And so Dan and his wife Beverly, and my wife Maureen and I were so we put the cards away, and we all get involved with picking a name for the restaurant, you know. And we had every kind of name you can think of, but that uh, a lot of them were are, are, uh, were goofy, and some of them were were good. Some of them, you know, there's pizza, pizza, whatever, pizza this, pizza that. And finally, Beverly says, Pizza Hut. And I said, God, that's a terrible name, Beverly. I said, it's not a, it's not a uh, Polynesian place or anything, a hut. I said, this is a, a, a you know, an Italian place. And she said, well, it looks like a hut. And anyway, we, we came up with about 30 different names, you know. And it had to be the first letter, the first, first word, two words. The first word could be about four four or five words long and the next one could be about two or three, three words long, or three letters long because the way the sign, the sign outside the place was built. <clears throat> so anyway, the next week we're playing bridge, Dan says, well, we're going to open the Pizza Hut. And I said, God, that's a terrible name, you know. <laughs> and anyway, of course, like he said, he talked to some people that, that or in business and they said well the name's not important because after you've been in business for a while people just second hand they 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 they, they, they they'll call it pizza hut and in fact the pizza people in wichita then in topeka later on they called all places sold pizza pizza huts the, the people called them all pizza huts because they got used to yeah. pizza hut yeah. it'd be the first place in that part of the country to sell pizza but anyway they 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 were going to open the first store and they did, and I was there when they were getting ready to go and everything, you know, and Dan says, why don't you come in with us? And I said, I'm selling life insurance, and I said, I'm driving a new car and wearing a suit and a tie every day. And I said, look at you guys in there making pizza, and you got flour all over your hair and tomato sauce all over your clothes, and, and, and uh, you know, I'm driving a new car, and, and, uh, and, and doing just fine, and he said, with dressing up and everything every day, and taking people to lunch and things, you know. And after about four or five months of it, Dan says, "How's the 
insurance business. And I said, well, first of August this year, I'm coming up, I said, I go off of salary and I go on straight commission. And he said, how much would you make on commission? And I said, I'd make probably about $90 a month as opposed to 600 a month I'm getting paid temporary while you know, I'm learning the business. And he said, well, you can't live on that. And I said, no, and my wife is getting awful nervous too. And he said, well, why don't you come in with us? You know, and, and I said, well, you mentioned that before. And I said, yeah, but can you make any money? And he said, you know what? He said, you know, it started kind of slow, but he said, we'll make about $25,000 this year. And that was in 1958. And I said, you know, that's pretty good money, isn't it? And he said, yeah, it is. Well, you know, if three partners have put it up, it's, it's, it's a, you know, each make, what, 12,000, 10,000 a year, something like that, almost. And, and we, 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 Dan and I both agreed that we, we'd sign up for life if we can make 10,000 bucks a week. A week or a week? $10,000 a week. No, a, a month, excuse me, a month, 10,000 a month. If we could make 10,000 a month, we'd sign up for life. 